Hello and welcome or welcome back to this channel. My name is Emily and I like to talk about books. And today we are going to go through every book that I physically own that is on my shelf that I have not yet read. I believe there are 49 books in total, so nothing too crazy, just a little bit of light reading, you know? I'm so excited to make this video because I have several books that I'm so excited to read, like dying to read, that it's hard to make a decision when I'm deciding what I'm gonna read next. I would also really love some recommendations. If there's anything that's sitting on my shelf that you feel I should prioritize over the other things on my shelf, that would be incredibly useful to me and I would really appreciate it. So first, starting off, I have The Dark Tower by Stephen King, which is exciting because I wanna read something by Stephen King, but that's also a paralyzing thought because he has so many books that are so highly regarded and I never know where to start. But this is one that I have and that I own and maybe a good contender because I've heard it's like his magnum opus, like one of his best books he's ever written. Next I have Tender is the Flesh, which is a dystopian novel about the ethical concerns about a world in which people are raised for meat. And this seems like a super interesting concept. The book is really short. It's been something I had my eye on for a while going into a bookstore that I would always see, never buy. But I finally picked it up and I'm really excited to read it this year. Next I have Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk, which is another really short, easy read. And I really like Survivor by him. So I'm interested to read another one of his like more popular books that I know has a movie, so that's always like a fun aspect. And I've never seen the movie and I don't really know like the concept of it besides what happens at Fight Club stays at Fight Club. Is that a saying? I don't actually know. You don't talk about Fight Club, something of the sorts. Next, I have A Thousand Ships, which I am literally pumped about because I love Greek mythology retellings. I have A House of Salt and Sorrows, which is a young adult fantasy book that I've read is pretty dark, so I'm really excited to get into a murder mystery fantasy vibe, and this is a series, so that's always exciting to start a series because then once you're in, you're in, and you're just excited about them. Next, I have The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, who I have never read anything by, and my sister got this for me as a gift and recommendation. So I'm really excited to read it because she's got good taste. Next I have The Girls, which I've heard is kind of culty coming of age. I have Shady Hollow, which my mom got me, which is said to be a cross between Watership Down and Mickey Spillane. Next I have The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which honestly scares me because I tried to start this and just could not keep track of the plot and all of the names. Since then, I've been scared to pick it back up because I'm scared that I'm not smart enough to read this book, which is funny because I don't feel like it's necessarily supposed to be that hard of a read. I just had a hard time with it and getting into it. But I really liked the movie. I've seen the movie and after seeing the movie, I was like, I need to read the book. So it continues to sit on my shelf and look at me and maybe we'll do it. The Devil and the Dark Water, which is I think a thriller set on a ship, a historical fiction kind of thriller, a theft and a murder. Could a demon be responsible for their misfortunes? I have Harry Potter because I've only read the first three or four in this series and I know that I need to continue. I have two comic books slash graphic novels. I have The Avengers and Secret Invasion and I've never read comics before like a couple years ago and I read Civil War and I really liked it so I have these waiting for me whenever I'm ready. I have Hellbent by Leigh Bardugo which is the second book in the Alex Stern series. I could not be more excited to read this. I don't know why I don't pick it up. I think it's just like I'm enjoying the anticipation of it almost because I loved Ninth House so freaking much. I know I'm gonna like this and I love knowing that I haven't read it, if that makes sense. Next, I have Spells for Forgetting, which is a cozy fantasy set in Seattle, so need I say more? Then I have How Does It Feel, which is a fantasy book that kind of is giving like Twilight meets A Court of Thorns and Roses based on what I read on the back, so this should be interesting, an interesting read. Then I have Piranesi by Susanna Clark. This is like one of the ones that I'm most excited about out of all of the books because the YouTuber Jack Edwards said that he would sell his soul to read this for the first time again, and it's another Greek mythology, I think retelling maybe i don't know i just know that this is the vibes that i 
love and this one's near the top of my list. Next I have My Sister's Keeper by Jodi Picoult, which my mom has been trying to get me to read for a really long time and I've been putting it off because I know that it's gonna make me really sad. Then I have The Seas by Samantha Hunt. I think it's a book about mermaids and that's exciting because does anyone else remember the tale of Emily Winsnap? I do. I have a Swiftly Tilting Planet by Madeline Lingle who wrote the Wrinkle in Time series that I love so much as a child and an adult. I just for some reason like did not finish this when I was reading it. I tabbed some places and got like 84 pages in and then just decided to stop. So it's on my shelf. I'm not sure if I'll reread it. I think that I loved a Wrinkle in Time and A Wind in the Door, the most of that series as a kid, and I think it's just kind of like the same now. Next I have Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, and I'm literally pumped because people have said that this is better than the Caravelle series, which I really enjoyed, but it's like a similar vibe. Then I have World of Wonders, which I feel like we're getting now more into the like spirituality, nonfiction, inspiration kind of portion of this video but this was super popular a couple years back and i never read it but i've had it on my shelf for a long time and i know that it's just something i need to get into because it's short and i know that I'll, i will enjoy it i have the operator's manual for planet earth which i picked up in a little bookstore it was on clearance and it had like a dedication from the author inside of it and it kind of is giving like hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy meets the alchemist so i figured that i might enjoy that but i've never heard anything about it so if you've read it please let me know then i have a new earth by eckhart tolle i have no idea how to say his name i liked the power of now so this is something that i would like to read i have meditations by marcus aurelius this is kind of an intimidating book for me for some reason philosophy like a lot of footnotes and that kind of scares me i have why men love which I DNF'd at like 40 pages I want to say I just was not vibing with all of the ideas in this book they weren't like that feminist to me but I still like I want to read it so that I can understand because I feel like this was just an iconic book in its time I have the gift of fear which was a gift for my mom I have big magic by Elizabeth Gilbert I have leaves of grass by Walt Whitman which is another gift from my mom and I really want to just start reading a little bit of this every day or like maybe flipping around in it because hello beautiful had so many Walt Whitman references and they were all very very beautiful and I feel like his work is just so iconic this is a big a big guy but we'll do it eventually or maybe just in small doses. I have Pale Fire by Vladimir Nabokov who wrote Lolita, which is like one of the most beautiful writing styles I've ever read in my life, like by a mile, even though the subject matter of Lolita was not beautiful at all. So I'm excited to read his like poetry prose book. I have the Tibetan Book of the Dead, which from my understanding is kind of an instruction manual of what to do when you die. It's short, so not a lot to do when you die or just really concise writing both good things. I have How to Do Nothing, Resisting the Attention Economy. I have Educated, which is a memoir that is so highly rated and talked about by like almost everyone I know. So I really am excited to read this. It just hasn't been like the most enticing to me to pick up. I have Mindfulness for Every Day, which I need to like keep by my bed or something so that I can go into my yoga classes with an intention. It's just like cute well-designed little quotes and things to think about so this is something that like i won't read cover to cover probably but should reference because sometimes the yoga class starts and the instructor says to set an intention and i'm like my mind is so empty it's never been this empty before i have moon magic um which is how to maintain physical wellness according to the moon so I had a phase when I was 19, didn't we all? The phase also included things like the Crystal Bible, Find Your Goddess, Life by Paulo Coelho, The Seven Levels of Attachment, and The Mastery of Love by Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. Oh, one's by Don Miguel Ruiz and one's by Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. So that's kind of cool, but I hated, I DNF'd this and I really was like disagreeing. I feel like I just simplified trauma and I didn't like that. I have The Little Book of Life Hacks, which is so cute. I've looked through this book a million times, but obviously never read it cover to cover. And it's basically like if Pinterest was put into a physical book, it would be this. It's so cute. It just has little tips for 
like how to keep your kitchen smelling fresh and how to cook and how to throw a party and it's just really really cute illustrations too so super fun to read and like great little life hacks to know i have the mind illuminated which there's this i bought this because there's a subreddit about this and it's basically a meditation textbook so this is something that i would love to dedicate some good time to because meditation and shavasana is like the hardest part of yoga to me and then i have some classics that i really need help prioritizing because it's hard to know what i'm gonna like in a classic and like i feel like there's just such varying degrees of difficulty when you pick up a classic so i have the picture of dorian gray which I've heard amazing things about, like beautiful, wonderful things about. I have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, which I feel like is just so referenced both directly and indirectly with the like concepts of things. So I feel like this is just an important read to have under my belt, like just playing God and the creations aspect of it, I feel like is done so often. I have Jane Eyre, which is a big book, but I've heard that it's really amazing. So please confirm or deny that this is amazing and worth reading because it's a little scary, as is Emma, but my favorite movie of all time was based on this book, so I feel like I really have to read it, but I tried to read it with a book club and didn't finish it. None of us did. So this is another one that makes me a little nervous. We've got some ambitious books on the list this year. I have East of Eden by John Steinbeck, another lengthy classic, but this is another one my sister recommended and got me as a gift. And I read Of Mice and Men, I think two years ago, and liked John Steinbeck's writing a lot, so excited to read one of his more lengthy books. Finally, I have The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. I believe this was also given to me as a gift and I just haven't read it. I'm kind of bad at taking recommendations because I'm a little stubborn. That's all that I have on my shelf and I'm pumped to read everything and to make a dent in them. Let me know in the comments if there's any of these books that you think I should prioritize over the others. That would be incredibly helpful for me. And also let me know if there's anything on my shelf that you're planning on reading this year because it would be really fun to read together, you know, same time, discuss. Thank you so much for watching. And if there's any book that is on my shelf that you would be excited to see a longer video about or just anything that I've mentioned in like our wrap up, that you think it'd be fun to see a longer video about, just let me know because I have a lot of ideas, but it's hard to prioritize the ideas. So it's super helpful when people will tell me what to do. Thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone has a great week slash evening slash day whenever you're watching this. Thank you so much. Thank you for the love. Please, please, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That would really help out this channel and me and I would appreciate it.